It's the last of the quarterfinal matches at the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. Welcome to Doha. Tumama Stadium and our wonderful aerial shots of the arena about to welcome Morocco and Algeria for the Maghreb derby and for the winners a semi-final against the host nation Qatar here on Wednesday feverish atmosphere building up two of the noisiest sets of supporters of the 16 nations from around the Arab world, including six from North Africa, and of course, Morocco and Algeria, neighbors in that region of the world. This is how Morocco got through, very impressive, with a game to spare after those 4-0 wins over Palestine and Jordan before they made it three wins out of three, nine goals scored, non conceded with a victory against Saudi Arabia. Algeria lost top spot in Group D by the narrowest of margins to Egypt. The two teams finished level on points, goal difference and goal scored. Egypt took top spot on the fair play ruling. And Egypt booked their place in the semi-finals earlier today. A match that went to extra time, having been a goal down to Jordan. Egypt won by three goals to one. So we know one of the semi-final lineups, it'll be Egypt against Tunisia. And as I mentioned, Qatar lie in wait for the victors here, Morocco or Algeria. Algerian fans here in considerable numbers, probably slightly, mm, it's maybe 50-50 in terms of the numbers supporting Morocco here too. There's certainly going to be plenty of noise. There's been a fierce rivalry between these two nations down the years. Still both in with a chance of qualifying for the World Cup Qatar 2022. They were one of 10 group winners in the African qualifying campaign. Those 10 group winners will now be paired off in five two-leg ties to decide Africa's five representatives for the 2022 finals. Morocco, along with Qatar, were the only teams to emerge with a 100% record in the group stage. Algeria initially intended to bring their A team, the under-23s here. Morocco had similar ideas, but both nations turned to players based with Arab clubs to strengthen their squads. A host of top names attached to clubs around Europe, missing for both. Well, there are one or two club teammates from around the various Arab countries. Touch on that a little later in the respective lineups. But any friendships will be quickly forgotten. This is a big match, and it means so much to both nations. Adrenaline pumping. A big prize at stake. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the teams of Morocco and Algeria.
Stand by for an enormous roar as the two teams are about to enter the arena. Who will grab the final semi-final place in a meeting with the hosts Qatar at the FIFA Arab Cup 2021 as North African rivals Morocco and Algeria meet at the Al Tumama Stadium? Morocco, the holders of the Arab Cup, the last edition held in 2012. Players lined up in readiness for the national anthems. Against Algeria, the Maghreb derby doesn't require any extra hyping up from me. This fixture speaks for itself. Morocco pretty much at full strength, captained by Bada Benoun, two goals in the tournament. A real leader, their number 13. Number five, Yaya Jabrani, will anchor the midfield. They've brought in an extra striker to the lineup in Ishmael El Haddad. We expect Morocco to line up 4-1-2-3. Wilton Sampaio of Brazil is our referee, the fourth official, Ryushi Sato of Japan. Noon and the Algeria captain goalkeeper Raïs Mboli embrace. In 
in charge of VAR, Rafael Trassi of Brazil. Well, Algeria's goalkeeper, Ray Simboli, conceded four goals when the teams last met. 21-year-old defender, number 12, Mohamed Tugai, is impressed at this tournament. So too is Hussein Rezegi, who's back from suspension after a red card against Lebanon, forced him out of the last group game, the draw against Egypt. Yassine Brahimi, very important. And Marouane Zarouki, a rookie striker, comes in for two-goal Baghdad Buneja, who is absent. The Moroccan coach, Hussein Amuta, knows all about this nation of Qatar, wants a player and coach with the top club here, Al Sad. And the countdown to kick off almost upon us. Magic Bulgera takes charge on the touchline for Algeria. Await the winners in the semi-final of the FIFA Arab Cup 2021. The rivalry between Morocco and Algeria down the years well documented. This is the last of the quarter-finals. And it promises to be very exciting between two attack-minded teams. Morocco have struck nine goals so far in their perfect group stage campaign. The only team yet to concede a goal in the tournament. Algeria have weighed in with seven goals themselves, and it's Morocco on the front foot straight away here. Algeria defend the situ situation well. Would expect this to be high octane. Interested to see how Zaruki fares in such a big game. Based in Algeria, he did bring a handful of local base players. But he certainly wouldn't have expected to have started this quarter final. Buneja not available to coach Bulgera. Mark Down is absent from the squad. Certainly would have started, not the best uh, ball out from Rais and Bully. Ben Depko came under pressure from the goalkeeper's poor clearance. But certainly fouled by Khalid Azaro. Quite wonderful atmosphere at the Al Jumama Stadium. The winners of this last quarter final will be back here on Wednesday to play the host nation Qatar. And goes Brasimi. Certainly caught. Brahimi. His best to get out of the way of the committed challenge from Abdullah Hafidi. Really important player for Algeria is Yassine Brahimi, very experienced. Look to get him on the ball at every given opportunity. Certainly has the tools to unlock any defence. And Morocco's has been watertight up to now. Is Brahimi one for Zaruki to chase 
Comfortable clearance for Zaniti. Suruki only 20. Up against some very experienced defenders. Brahimi. Many people forecasting this could be a very tight quarter-final. You wouldn't have me arguing with that. You have the potential for 30 minutes extra time, possibly penalties to separate them. Nigeria on the front foot here. Forward by Galali. It's a very difficult pass to get right. Meziani was trying to make progress. Only around half of the Morocco squad at this FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. Play their club football in Morocco, spread mainly around Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Egypt. Two of the noisiest sets of fans you'll find anywhere on the planet, and they are here in numbers for this derby match. Matches won't be until March. Of course, the African Cup of Nations will start in January. Won't finish until early February. So a busy few months for the top African sides to 2022 on the road to both Morocco and Algeria, hoping to be back here in less than a year from now when the World Cup itself rolls into Qatar. Zariki. Nursing a saw one there. Calls for a strong referee whenever these two meet. And with the job, Wilton Sampaio of Brazil quickly affording Algeria the free kick. Opportunity to get bodies forward. Benayada stands over this Algeria free-kick. Algeria fans, top of your screen. Hoping for something special here. Comfortable defending in the end for Morocco. Poor ball from Azaro. A lot of players you're looking at are hoping to impress and work them themselves into contention for the African Cup of Nations squad early next year. Brahimi will certainly be in it, but others less than sure. The referee says there was no contact. He did look a little sheepish there, Yassine Brahimi. He was entitled to have booked him there for simulation, but he didn't. This is two guy. Three players at the back for Algeria. Play their club football for the same club in Tunisia, Esperance. Searching ball. This will 
break for Brahimi. Hoping that decision was going to go his way, but it will be the first corner of the match for Algeria. Very little to separate these two in the current world rankings. Morocco at 28, Algeria four places beneath them. Belali with the corner. crowd scene in front of Anas Zaniti, the Moroccan goalkeeper. Balali designs on curling this right under the nose of the goalkeeper, who's under immense pressure if the delivery is right. And it is! And he gets a decent punch on that, Zaniti back out with Balali. Once more, can't tense his way through. Morocco look to play out. They don't do that very well at all. Algeria looking lively. They have another corner. Conceded by Nahiri. Young Zaruki showing no sign of nerves in the opening minutes. He's the man who's forced this corner. and Morocco defend it well. Not a good challenge. Ishmael El Haddad, player brought in as an extra striker, Mark doing his defensive work here. Clearly catching Balali. Zaniti isn't the usual first choice senior international goalkeeper. Sevilla's Yassin Bono has that honour, but the European base players not available for both teams. the service El Cati was looking for. Captain Benu. El Haddad can't link with Azaro. Given away cheaply by Algeria. Ricochet is dangerous! Tremendous goalkeeping. Flags up for offside. But he didn't know. Rice and Bolly is very brave. 
diving at the feet of Wally Nazaro. The ricochet was potentially really awkward. You can see that Nazaro was offside. But alert. Certainly willing to take a knock there, Rai Samboli, as he dived at the feet of Azaro. Bulk of the Morocco fans behind the goal, which they attack in the first half. Some treatment here for Mboli. in particular produced some spectacular attacking football in this tournament they have the most attempts of any of the 16 teams here in the group stage 78 in total produced nine goals without reply not too many forecasting a goalless outcome Wanting a word here with Ishmael El Haddad. He's trying to pull out, in fairness to him. Those players based with European clubs who ordinarily would have been playing in a senior international tournament like this, but of course wanted by their, their clubs who weren't forced to release them. And that is going to be a yellow card, I should think. Referee Wilton Sampaio shows it to Marwani Sadani of the Al Fatah Club in Saudi Arabia. Now, has to be very careful. Full stretch to try and reach that, but certainly caught Meziani. A good position here now for Algeria. Some powerful figures in there, Algeria. Keep an eye out for number 12, two guy. Strong in the air. So too Bedrani, number 19. Away by El Haddad. Anywhere would do there for Morocco. Brahimi. Excellent challenge from Chibi. I think he enjoyed that. Perfectly timed. Made his debut in the World Cup qualifier only last month. Mohamed Chibi came against Sudan. Two guy. Black says down. Algeria. Shot away, still alive for Algeria. And then 
actually the assistance flag is up. But they were getting very excited there. The Algerian fans. Looked like it might open up for Brahimi initially. The flag is very late. Assistants are told to keep them down. The attack developed for several seconds afterwards. And then eventually it went up. Some metres offside there initially. Even if they had found the net, Algeria wouldn't have counted. Majid Bouguera is the A-team coach for Algeria. The head coach is Jamal Belmadi. But with it being a, something of an experimental Algeria squad, Bouguera has got the touchline duties. 18 months he's been associated with the A-team. Born in France, Majid Bouguera, but played international football for the country where his grandfather was born. Given away by Gibrani. Algeria not travelling very far. El Kati. He's calm, didn't panic there, Rai Simboli, expecting it would travel through to him. 20 exciting minutes gone here. Both sides who know only one way of playing, and that is to attack. Plenty of quality in both attacks. Resolute defenders as well, only one goal these two nations have conceded between them to get to this last of the quarterfinals of the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. Already through to the semi-finals, the host nation, Qatar, had an extraordinary first half last night against the UAE. 5-0 up at half-time, finish 5-0. Almost finished in the hands of Roy Simboli. Ashraf Bin Shaki, who made the incursion, and he wants a corner here. I think it just did brush off his left leg. This is a good angle to see it. Yeah, I think it just came off Bin Shaki last. Plays for Zamalek in Egypt. Got a hand it to the Moroccan and Algerian fans at this tournament so far. They really have brought colour and noise to the occasion. Free kick, Algeria. Much to the frustration of Gibrani. Wasn't much contact there, but the referee was at close quarters. Approaching the midway point of the first half. And it is the host nation, Qatar, that await the winners of this last quarter-final in the semi-final, which will be here at the Al Tumama Stadium this coming Wednesday. The other semi-final will also be played that day, and it will be between Tunisia Egypt, who got the better of Jordan earlier today after extra time, after Jordan had been one up in the game. Egypt came on strong in that extra time period and ran out 3 1 winners. So we're going to have three North African teams in the last four. Haddad. No 
no attempts at goal so far from the free scoring Morocco. Top scorers in the group stage. Algeria have had three attempts. Nothing yet to trouble either goalkeeper. This is Chibi. A lot of space in which to run into. Not a particularly good cross. This is El Kati. Now Brahimi for Algeria. Two guy. Flag up for offside against Zaruki. Algeria are one of two continental champions at this. FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. Well, the reigning African champions won that in 2019, same year as Qatar won the Asian Cup. Poor clearance by Grace and Bolly. Morocco could be in here. It's a heavy touch from Azaro. He'll get a corner out of that, Morocco's first, but it might have been so much more. Really poor kick out from Ray Simboli, put his side under pressure. Right in front of the Moroccan fans, it will be Abdullah Hafidi. Two goals already at this tournament for the number 18, who will take this corner kick. Keep an eye out for the captain, Benoon. He's also got two goals in this competition. Wilson Sampaio, our Brazilian referee, with a keen eye on things, and he isn't satisfied at the moment that all is well in there. There's a lot of pushing and pulling going on. It's taken short, and in by El Haddad! It's a good tip over save from Bolly. El Carti with the header. And the goalkeeper had to react really swiftly here. It was heading in without the goalkeeper's touch. El Haddad with the corner. Mohamed Chibi shaping for the long throw and then drops it in short. Room for the cross. Didn't fancy taking it on with his left foot, Chibi. Well, it is quite apparent. And if you are going to win this particular quarter-final, you're going to have to work very, very hard for it. No quarter asked for, or indeed given. An attritional Maghreb derby building up here in Doha. Brahimi.
challenge on Brahimi. Referee very well positioned to give it. Coming in for a lot of attention in this first half, Yasin Brahimi. by the way, will host eight matches at next year's World Cup finals, including a quarter-final. This is El Haddad, as had drifted offside, El Haddad knew that. But they've got an overload here, Morocco. Cross looks for Azaro, is behind him, he goes down looking for a penalty. Moroccan players surround the referee, Wilton Sampaio. They're asking strongly here for a penalty, they think there was a push on Azaro. Let's have a look. Down he goes, two guys, the defender. VAR will certainly be having a look at it. They're in the referee's ear. Uh, on field, referee is saying, get on with it to Morocco, just a corner. Wait for the whistle. Wilton Sampaio's message. It's a little eager to take this corner, Morocco. In by El Haddad. It's well defended. It's a very even first half. Both sides have had their spells of pressure. Ishmael El Haddad, player who's nursing the knock, just sort of coming together with Tayeb Meziani. as you might expect in a game of this magnitude it's always a big game when these two meet let alone a quarter-final Walton Sampaio of Brazil is still awaiting VAR's review of a possible penalty Rafael Trassi of Brazil has now completed the check and on we go goalless at the Al Tamama Stadium Brahimi seen as much of the ball as anyone Yassin Brahimi up to now Trying to find a way through, just too many bodies there for him. Is a 
card that will disappoint his coach. Hussein Atuma. Instant shot. Shambuli deals with, but there was a surprise element there from Hafidi. Took it on early before the goalkeeper really got himself set. It's a smart effort from Hafidi. This is Meziani, surrounded by Moroccan shirts. Just needed a little bit of help there, Meziani. This is two guy. mentioned earlier that a number of these players hoping to work their way into African Cup of Nations squads early next year but of course with an eye too to perhaps impressing enough to maybe get into the World Cup squad if one of these or both are back for the World Cup finals anticipation already pretty much Fever pitch in Qatar in readiness for becoming the first nation to host the World Cup finals in the Middle East. <laughs> Two guy. Possession, well, they've got in his own teammates' way there, but it's one back by Bedrani. Chance to get in behind here for Morocco. Mazzaro waiting for the cross, joined by El Haddad in the middle. This is Chibi. El Haddad back with Chibi. And his final touch. Chetty with the Algeria throw. Amongst those regular senior internationals for both who are not here, Roman Saïs is in the English Premier League with Wolverhampton Wanderers, Ashraf Hakimi, Paris Saint-Germain, mentioned Yassin Bono, the normal first choice goalkeeper he's in Spain with Sevilla so too striker Youssef El Nasiri and amongst the players missing for Algeria Riyad Mahrez of Manchester City Saeed Ben Rama also plays in England's Premier League with West Ham Sofian Faguli Aisa Mandi of the 27 named for the recent World Cup qualifying matches against Djibouti and Burkina Faso for Algeria. 19 of those 27 are not here. Chibi, happy to go back here with Zaniti. They'd come. Morocco play their way out neatly. Mazzaro.
Brahimi. Sadani underneath this. Plenty of time for Benoun. Good pass from the captain. Ambitious effort. Had a lot of options there. Nahiri, a disappointing shot. Atmosphere inside the Al Jumama Stadium as we enter the final five minutes of the first half. There will be a little bit of time to be added on, I would think. Predictably tight in the last of the quarter final matches, already through to the semi finals. Qatar, who await the winners of this game, match here at the Al Jumama this coming Wednesday. We know the other semi-final will be between North African rivals Tunisia and Egypt. Tunisia defeated Oman 2-1 in their quarter-final. Egypt earlier today, after being a goal down, defeated Jordan 3-1 after extra time. Qatar last night thrashed the United Arab Emirates 5-0 at the Al Bayt Stadium in Al Khor City. All five goals coming in the first half. Some dreadful defending from the UAE in that match. evidence of how good defensively these two sides are first goal could be all important in this quarter-final on by Zaruki but he was rather isolated there found their usual rhythm Morocco one or two arguments going on he was asking for a better pass there Ben Sharkey frustration for the coach Hussein Amuta good midfield player in his time Had 73 goals in this Arab Cup tournament. This is match 28. We're averaging 2.7 goals per game in by El Haddad. Not much distance with a header. El Kati. Sedani. Happy to come forward into midfield, Benoum, but he's lost out there. And Algeria might be in. Real good opportunity opening up now. And they ask for a penalty, the referee says no. Algeria with a player down in the penalty area. At the other end of the pitch, Morocco play on and they have a corner. Well, they're entitled to play on, it's not a head injury. Was there a clip there on Zaruki, or does he engineer the contact? Contact there most certainly is, but who 
is deemed to have made the crucial contact. Of course, VAR are checking for a possible penalty. There's definitely contact, but did Zaruki try to engineer it himself? Or will VAR... And the check's over. There's no ifs, buts or maybes about it. It's no penalty. My first thought was that Zaruki engineered the contact. And that is the way that VAR's reviewed it, certainly the way the on-pitch referee viewed it. So it's a good call from Wilton Sampaio. Meantime, Morocco have a corner. This wouldn't be a bad time to score, would it? Just before the break. Corner will be taken by Abdullah Hapidi. El Haddad is there for the short option. Header is well over the top. Two players going for the same ball there. Sadani and Azaro. Well, they got in one another's way, I think. Azaro met it. Maybe better placed was Sadani, but it didn't get through to him. Much to his frustration. So we are deep into the first of three additional minutes at the end of a half that hasn't brought us any goals, but it's had its excitement. Crowd is certainly adding to the general atmosphere here at the Al Tumama. It's been played at a high tempo. Both sides just missing that final ball, I think. Nigeria winning good possession. Here's Bellali. Good-looking pass. Touch is good. Oh, and Messiani fires well wide. Well, he takes a delightful first touch here. Couldn't have asked for a better one. Lovely pass from Balayli. And he should be testing Zaniti in the Moroccan goal there. Snatched at it to poor miss. And we haven't had too many clear openings, but that was certainly a chance for Algeria to have the lead at half-time. for handball, given. Driven free kick, won't find its way through. Calmness personified there, the captain, Benut. Chibi, closing seconds of the first half. El Haddad, free kick, and there'll be time enough to take it. This will be the last play of the half. Moroccan captain Benoun has made his way forward. Just beyond the penalty spot is where Morocco will be hoping to land this free kick in by El Haddad. Short of the penalty spot, but wasn't a bad delivery that from El Haddad, but no teammate could get on the end of it. The referee wants the ball. I suspect it's going to be the half-time whistle. Indeed it is. So it has been predictably high octane without too many Goldmouth thrills and spills, defences by and large have been on top. Meziani had a good chance late on in the half. El Carti's been the closest with a header for Morocco. But half time in the quarter final at the Altamama. Morocco nil, Algeria nil.
This is how the first half has shaped up at the Altamama Stadium. Algeria with more of the possession, can't split them in terms of attempts. Nothing on target from Algeria, who've looked pretty good going forward at times. Couple on target for Morocco. And the referee has shown two first half yellow cards to Morocco for El Haddad and Sadani. The last of the quarterfinals at the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. Pitches North African rivals Morocco against Algeria. Wonderful atmosphere generated by both sets of fans. Algeria threatening early on with a free kick from Brahimi. been some excellent defending from both teams in this first half well after some pressure from Algeria without too much threat on the Morocco goal Morocco trying to find a way through nothing doing for Abdelilah Hafidi at this point in the first half Morocco we're beginning to look the more dangerous of the two teams. Good run from Benchaki, who wanted a corner. It's brave goalkeeping from Rice and Bully. And then from a poor clearance from the goalkeeper, almost let Morocco in. Just wouldn't sit down for Azaro. But from the Resultant corner, El Kati brought the best out of Raiz and Bully. This was heading into the Algeria net, but for the good reactions from Mbolli. Just once or twice, Morocco slipped into their usual rhythm in the final third. Pressed the Algeria defence again. They look for a penalty, but after a brief VAR check, nothing doing for Morocco. Game has been played at a feverish tempo. And this was Algeria's best look at the Morocco goal just before half-time. After a great first touch from Meziani, a disappointing final shot. Nothing to split them at half-time. Morocco nil, Algeria nil.
Welcome back to the Al Tamama Stadium, where it's half time in this fierce rivalry that's endured down the decades between Morocco and Algeria. The Algerians making a change, as you can see, with the young 20 year old striker Marouane Zorouki not reappearing for the start of the second half. He was a surprise starter and only a starter because Baghdad Boudinja was marked down as absent from tonight's squad. Zakaria Draoui is on to replace Zarouki. Still awaiting the arrival from Morocco for the start of this second half. Algeria out early, either that or Morocco are late. for the right to play Qatar in the semi-final in this stadium this coming Wednesday. The other semi-final will be between Tunisia and Egypt, another all-North African rivalry. Egypt secured their place in the last four earlier today, needed extra time to get the better of Jordan by three goals to one. Jordan were one nil up at one stage. That match was only played around uh, 12 kilometers from where I am sat right now at the Al Janoub in Doha. Stadiums in what's going to be a unique World Cup finals in 2022. So close to one another, you're never more than an hour away from any and a lot less away from some. You can get between two stadiums in half an hour, maybe a little longer. The World Cup will be busier, of course, than it has been for this Arab Cup competition. But there will certainly be the prospect of taking in two matches in a day. And that's what's going to make the World Cup Finals Qatar 2022 unique. So away we go for the second half. Algeria in the white strip. Attack the goal away to our right. Morocco haven't made a change at half-time. A reminder, that change for Algeria. Zakaria Draoui has replaced Merouane Zarouki. Algeria have now placed Mohamed Belali as the central striker. Drawi is more of a midfield player, so Belali will play as the focal point of the attack. Well, I mentioned quite early in tonight's commentary that first goal could be very important. Still only one goal conceded between these two teams in the competition.
Here's Bill Ali. Hello, cheap possession, chance! Very good save from Zaniti. Meziani. Took an age to engage, they just didn't engage. Sadani sitting off. Bellali and it almost squeezed underneath Zaniti. That's the closest we've been to the opening goal. Just been praising the team, the only team yet to concede a goal in this Arab Cup tournament. But Morocco was so slow to deal with the run there of Belayli, was allowed time and space to deliver that dangerous cross. Zakaria Drawi, who missed that golden opportunity. What an entrance that would have been as the second half substitute. Good start to the second half from Algeria, Brahimi. Meziani attacks the space. He's done well there, Meziani under the seconds and another good save from Zaniti. That might have been creeping in without the goalkeeper's left foot. Just needs some possession now, Morocco. Forward by Azaro. El Haddad showing real good pace to apply pressure. But Algeria will get the throw. Two important saves to Manas Zaniti in the early moments of the second half in that Morocco goal. Driven in by El Haddad, but way over the crossbar. In fact, it was Bencharki who had the attempt. This is the good work from Meziani. Lucky to get a second bite at it, but there, look, deflection off the defender. Going the wrong way, all his weight on his right hand side. It's a good stop from Zaniti to deny Meziani. Fans making all the noise currently inside the Al Timama Arena. Encouraged by their side start to the second half. Forward by Gibrani. Algeria just gathering around El Haddad, who's really got a turn of pace. Seen that a couple of times in the last minute or so. Lovely turn by Brahimi. Can't get it past Benun. And the Algeria fans love that turn from Yassine Brahimi. Game getting a little stretched in the early minutes of the second half. Which might encourage us towards an opening goal in this quarter-final. Handball against Benchaki. One of the 
few players in the Morocco squad in double figures for senior caps, Benchaki, before this Arab Cup tournament. earlier about the African Cup of Nations which will come up and start in uh, January Morocco in with the group including Ghana Comoros and Gabon Algeria in with Cote d'Ivoire Equatorial Guinea and Sierra Leone Algeria going into the African Cup of Nations 2022 as the reigning CAF champions turn to get on the front foot now Benchaki now here he's cross no takers it was behind a number of red shirts that had attacked that Algeria penalty area certainly more than a few signs that the first goal in this quarter-final may not be too far away Risking losing possession there, the central defender. Drawi taken out unceremoniously by El Kati. It's the man who had that great chance when he almost squeezed the ball underneath goalkeeper Zaniti. Point blank range. And Zaniti made that save. Jabrani. Now here he won't get to that. A little more animated there, Hussein Amuta, the head coach of Morocco. African Cup of Nations tournament I was talking about early 2022 is scheduled to be staged in Cameroon I've got to say that he's kept control very well of this often incendiary fixture between Morocco and Algeria our Brazilian referee Walton Sampaio Terrific pass. Chibi's cross. Goalkeeper a little uncertain there. Rice and Bully. Should have been a routine take for the goalkeeper, I would have thought. Pedrani. Benayada earning the free kick for Algeria. That was the cross from Chibi. 
rather uncertain on Bully here. He didn't fully commit to that. Nice touch from Bellali. Zaniti untroubled. Oh! Well, somehow it's popped out of his grasp. Extraordinary. What a gift of a corner this is for Algeria. Now you see it, now you don't. Oh, Zaniti will be distraught if that simple mistake leads to the quarter-finals opening goal. Corner taken by Brahimi. And he'll have another. Four waiting for a cross. No great appeal from Algeria for a penalty there. And Morocco have got a break on if they can keep this moving. Algeria very quickly back into shape, though. And we're looking at supreme athletes there. They were ahead of the ball, and then in the blink of an eye, there were four white-shirted defenders back in position. Here's El Carti. Referee's whistle in evidence. It's going to be treatment for the Algeria player a few moments ago went down in the penalty area he was looking for the penalty Bellali here challenge from Chibi VAR are checking for a possible penalty play continued for some considerable time of course, VAR are checking and rechecking and checking again, all manner of incidents that go on during a match. Now the referee's been asked to go to his review area. He didn't give it initially, Wilton Sampaio. And so often, this can lead to an overturn of the original call of no penalty. Nervous wait here for Morocco. Did Chibi's outstretched left leg catch Bill Ali? And what's her intent behind it? Rafael Tracy of Brazil has sent his countryman Wilton Sampaio to his review area, asking him to review his original call of no penalty. Is he going to change his mind and give it? We're about to find out. Penalty, Algeria! Chibi's challenge, punished. On a VAR review. And I have to say, having seen the replay, there did look to be a good deal of contact between that trailing left leg of Chibi and Bill Ali. Anas Saniti, the Moroccan goalkeeper, has made a couple of really important saves in the early minutes of the second half. As Morocco make a couple of changes, Rahimi and El Bakawi are coming on for El Haddad and Azaro. Long wait for Yassin Brahimi. The biggest roar of the night from the Algerian fans if this hits the back of the net. Brahimi against Zaniti. He got there, 
Zanetti, but somehow the hand wasn't strong enough. An Algeria lead in the Maghreb derby. First goal that Morocco have conceded at this Arab Cup. And Chibi's injudicious challenge eventually on the VAR review. The initial call was no penalty. And the referee, having looked at it and looked at it and looked at it, decided it was. And Brahimi, his heart would have been beating out of his chest for a few seconds as the goalkeeper guessed the right way. Probably Zaniti might feel he ought to have stopped it. Seemed to get a strong hand to Brahimi's penalty, but he didn't keep it out. Well, now we've got a quarter-final on our hands. Still plenty of time for Morocco to strike back. Good position here. Seven red shirts inside that Algeria penalty area. Morocco looking for an instant reply. And they might have it in the half! The perfect response! Mohamed Nahiri! But listen to the noise now from the Moroccan fans! you have to say from Algeria but they loaded bodies into the penalty area as I mentioned there were seven red shirts in there now here he found space and the team who are defending the Arab Cup Morocco on terms Algeria's lead lasted barely two minutes. Here's Al Kati. Nahiri rushes off the challenge. Can't advance towards that Algeria penalty area. Now, counter attack might be on. It's great work from Meziani. Trying to find Bel Ali, it was in space. Vital interception there for Morocco. No one is going to take their eyes off this for the remainder of this second half. Remember, at their level at the end of normal time, it'll be 30 minutes extra time, and if they still can't be separated, penalties to decide who will meet the host nation Qatar in this coming Wednesday's semi-final. The other semi-final, also on Wednesday, will be between Tunisia and Egypt. into double figures now in this Arab Cup. Nahiri in the 10th. And they look really as though the momentum is with them at the moment, fired up by the quick response to the Brahimi penalty. Bel Ali. Oh, Brahimi. 
No, he's gone down too easily. Not even asking for a penalty. Morocco and Algeria looking one another firmly in the eye. You attack, we attack. I think we knew it was going to be this kind of game. Defences were on top for much of the first half. It's not been the case in the second. Cheap throw in, given away by Algeria. Chetty. Two guy. Terrific run out from the back. And he's given the ball away. Now he's trying to get back into position, two guy. Benchaki. Oh, great turn. So well there, El Bakawi with the initial run. Denied by Ray Samboli. Then Charky just couldn't get over the header. Just couldn't climb enough to direct it on target. Got a stoppage for an injury for Algeria. Gives us all a chance to catch our breath. Rhythmic hand clapping. It was the Iceland fans, wasn't it, that started that? It's been copied by a number of nations around the world. And we'll see it again in next year's World Cup finals here in Qatar. President of FIFA, Gianni Infantino, one of the interested onlookers. Algeria very nearly didn't play Morocco in this quarter-final. It was exceptionally close to who finished top and who finished second in Group D between Egypt and Algeria. They played out a 1-1 draw in the final group match to finish level on points, level on goal difference, level on goals scored. But it was Egypt who took top spot on the fair play ruling because they had had fewer cards at the group stage that's how close it was and Egypt as group D winners played their quarter-final earlier today against the group C runners-up Jordan who were one up at one stage in the match it went to extra time after Egypt equalized but Egypt put two more goals past Jordan without reply to run out 3-1 winners to take their place in the last four in that semi-final on Wednesday against Tunisia. Qatar lying in wait, the host nation, for the winners of this one. Another 
injury for Algeria. Messiani is down. Substitution made. Put many is on to replace Messiani. Five minutes, boot many in this competition. He is a striker, another of the Tunisian base players. Beniano with the oh no, he's not going to take the corner. Calls across the new man, but many to take it. Work to do for goalkeeper Zaniti. It's a good fist to that. Brahimi. Lovely footballer, isn't he? Yassine Brahimi. So easy on the eye. player, I think, in the remainder of this quarter-final, Brahimi for Algeria. Nahiri, the man who got the equaliser for Morocco. Put under pressure by the Benchagi pass, but it will be a free kick to the Moroccans. Sadani looks for Benchaki. Little dummy was effective from Hossein Beniada. Sight in the stands there of one of the interested uh, onlookers at this quarter final, the Maghreb derby. Brazil's head coach Chichi is here. Inside the last quarter of an hour of normal time, remember 30 minutes extra time at their level at the end of 90 minutes plus. The third of the quarter finals. This competition went to extra time between Egypt and Jordan earlier today. Is that a push? The referee has a good stare at it and says no. It says no to that as Brahimi hit the turf. Benchaki. Spreads the play nicely for Chibi. Good looking cross, and the header's wide. Did it take a deflection, I wonder? I think the referee is. Is he given the corner here? It's a lovely cross from Chibi. And it's El Bakawi, whose header was on target before it took the deflection. It is certainly a Morocco corner. Another. Great cross from Chibi. Oh, and Bolly looking ill 
these again with the ball in the air. He's not convincing this captain of Algeria, their goalkeeper, Ray Samboli. Doesn't look happy when the ball is in the air. He got lucky. Real threat from corners, Morocco. They've had more corners than any other team at this tournament. They had 16 in one match. 4-0 win against Jordan at the group stage. Here's Nahiri, their goal scorer this evening. Benchaki. Momentum with Morocco. El Kati. Looking for Chibi's run again. That's well wide. Maybe deflected, it is. Another corner. Snapshot from Hafidi. But Chibi is becoming more and more of a weapon down the Morocco right, getting a lot of space. Ashraf Benchaki with the corner. Goalkeeper stays at home this time. I think you're looking at that is a confident goalkeeper with the ball in the air. He's coming and taking an easy catch there. But he's ill at ease, as I've mentioned, Ray Samboli. Just said to his defenders, you defend that, I'm not getting involved. But it really looked like it should have been the goalkeeper's ball. Lost in admiration for both sets of supporters. They never stop chanting, singing, clapping. The two teams could not us for any better support. Just whetting our appetites for what's to come in the World Cup finals here in Qatar in less than 12 months from now. Two players down in midfield, referee allowing play to continue for now. Eventually will point towards a Morocco free kick. Sofian Rahimi is put back to his feet. Those two saves in the early minutes of the second half from Zaniti and the Morocco goal away to our right could turn out to be very important stops. Nigeria not seeing a lot of the ball, but they will there for a poor pass from Benoun and like him. They will lead to an Algeria free kick. Misplaced pass from the Morocco captain, Bader Benoun. Opportunity for Algeria to get bodies forward for the first time in a while in this second half. at the shot in the end. Zinedine Butmeni. Good first touch off his thigh. A little off balance. Probably not his favourite side either, Butmeni. Certainly had a sight of the Morocco goal there, the substitute. Talking 
earlier about a number of these players trying to work their way into the coaches thinking for the African Cup of Nations not Morocco or Algeria's full senior international squads here as I mentioned before the European base players have not called up both these two nations scoured the Arab world for players attached to Arab clubs to strengthen their squads they've both brought players from Morocco and Algeria they've certainly bolstered their 23 man squads with as I said players attached to Arab clubs I was going on to say that one or two certainly putting themselves in the frame I think Chibi of Morocco comes into that situation he's caught the eye not a very experienced player at this level at all although he did make his senior international debut in a World Cup qualifier last month against Sudan and he's done his chances of staying in the senior international squad no harm at this tournament two balls on the pitch so that will have to be remedied and we have seven minutes plus additional time remaining Chetty was going no further, said Benoon. That was cynical. Certainly worthy of the yellow card. Third yellow card of this quarter final, all of them to Morocco. A good position here now for Algeria. I think Belali fancies a shot at goal here. No reason why he shouldn't strike and try and test Saniti. Good angle for the right foot. This is coming in with pace. Could easily get a deflection off a defender or an attacker. Pressure here on Morocco. About to tiptoe into the last five minutes of normal time. Mohamed Belali. Oh dear. Just wonder whether he changed his mind at the last moment. Or whatever. There's a real sense of anti-climax about that. in the pass options left and right there oh, some tired legs it's been played at a high tempo throughout this match very tired for those who have been out there since the start Benayada. Brahimi. Looked tired. Close control, letting him down for once. No free kick, says Brazilian referee. Wilton Sampaio Nahiri poor pass out of position now Nahiri but the ball is out for a Morocco throw G 
Nigeria coach Majid Bouguera was almost on the pitch there, marking out his instructions. Neither team can afford to concede a goal now. There wouldn't be much time for recovery. We're inside the last three minutes, plus time to be added on. Might be our second quarter final of the day that will go to extra time after Egypt. Saw off Jordan in the third of the quarterfinals, 3 1 in the end after it finished 1 1 at the end of 90 minutes. Nahiri. It's a foul. Ben Debka. Carty. Time ticking round to almost ten to midnight local time. Nice reaction between him and Nahiri at the end of that. Despite these two nations being fierce rivals, that was nice to see. Approaching the 90th minute now. Bit of room for Brahimi. No free kick, and again the referee right up with play there, affording himself an excellent view. We will have a stoppage here. Two players flat out, Balali and Sadani. Hussein Atuma will take after the African Cup of Nations Morocco into those World Cup playoffs along with these two Morocco and Algeria the other eight nations in the CAF region who are through to those World Cup playoffs Egypt Tunisia who will meet in one of the semi-finals at this Arab Cup competition in Qatar. Senegal, Cameroon, Nigeria, Ghana, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Mali. We're into a minimum now of five-minute stoppage time. And those ten group winners in the second round of African World Cup qualifying will go into five two-legged ties to determine Africa's five representatives here for the finals in Qatar 2022. Malali going to return work really hard for his country Mohamed Bilali plays for the Qatar social club one of the few in this Algeria squad who were named in the last World Cup squad Bilali trying to get his uh, way back on Will be welcomed back, I think, by Wilton Sampaio. Approximately four minutes for one of these two to find a goal before the need for extra time. It's a really good one, if the touch is right, it wasn't. Not the easiest one to take for Zinedine Butmeni. But the raking pass was perfect weight. 
got in behind Nahiri, who was rather caught by that pass, the left back. Here's Bencharki. Nahiri. Should be run through to the goalkeeper. No problems for Mboli. nation Qatar will be too displeased if these two have to play an extra 30 minutes Qatar comfortably saw off the challenge of the United Arab Emirates never mind over 90 minutes their quarter-final was won after a little over 35 and there were 3-0 up it was 5-0 at half-time for the host nation Zaniti has stayed down here Looked an innocuous fall to the ground. May just have turned his ankle, perhaps. Both teams with ten attempts at goal, both with four on target. equal possession he just had that feeling it was going to be a very even contest and it has certainly been that the two goals came in the space of barely two second half minutes a little over 60 seconds or so before they will go into extra time Carty. Benchaki. Chibi. It's a gift from Algeria. Poor touch that from Draoui, the substitute. Inside the closing 30 seconds of normal time. Nahiri. Can Morocco open up Algeria here? If they do, find a goal. It's most certainly going to be a winning goal. Wilton Sampaio, though, is going to bring an end to normal time. We're going to 30 minutes extra time to decide our last semi-finalist at the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. After Yassine Brahimi had fired Algeria in front with a 62nd minute penalty. Great response from Morocco. Nahiri equalised just two minutes later and we await extra time in the quarter-final. staff come into their own make sure that players are at their best that they can possibly be at this stage of a quarter-final in a major tournament physically coaches will be hoping to keep their players switched on mentally
full credit to Algeria for getting through 90 minutes plus without a single yellow card in what is always a fiercely contested derby match. Three yellow cards have been issued by our Brazilian referee. Benun, El Haddad and Sadani. Sadani and Benun are still likely to start extra time. El Haddad previously substituted. needed the rest didn't they the players you look at they absolutely shattered some of them late night kids who's got the strong coffee shortly be passing midnight but an absorbing quarter-final between these regional rivals strong challenge to this Arab Cup 2021 from the North African nations only one of them will fail to reach the semi-final stage with Egypt and Tunisia facing one another in one of those semis and who will be playing Qatar in the other Morocco or Algeria captains gather around Wilton Sampaio for the toss. No one is leaving early. Who blinks first? We're into 30 minutes extra time between Morocco and Algeria. Before we find our last semi-finalist at the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. May even take penalties to decide it. Algeria. On the front foot straight away here, way by Sadani, easily spotted now by, with the head bandage. Quite often in matches that go to extra time, it can be quite sterile affairs. I've got a feeling this isn't going to be one of those. I think they'll both have their attacking head on, it's very much in their DNA. 
free kick here to Algeria. Morocco don't like the decision. Clearly don't like the decision. It's gone against Benchaki. Very good set piece position here. Benoom, the Moroccan captain, is arguing with referee Sampaio over that decision. This looks encouraging for Algeria. Two players at the moment to the left of Benayada outside the penalty area for a rollback for a shot at goal. If they decide they want to do that, the options there may be looking for the six white shirts gathered in and around the penalty spot. So Benayada still got the option of playing it outside the area for somebody to come on to. And he tries to catch out Ziniti. Goalkeeper was having none of it. sets of players determined to leave absolutely nothing out there. Forward by Nahiri. Not the best of touches. Might have done better there, Rahimi. to 75 goals now in this Arab Cup tournament. The 76th, if it arrives in this extra time period, might just be a decisive one to produce our last semi-finalist. Sadani. Chibi still willing down that right for Morocco. Easy take this time from Bolli, who has looked uncertain on a number of crosses this evening, but unattended there. Needed to be by two guy. He's closing out El Bakawi. Shouldn't have been allowed the space to turn there, Rahimi. Not the best defending from Ben Depka. Two guys okay. Morocco have the corner. Afidi to take. Sadani up. Couldn't direct the header goalwards. Tack stays alive though. Here's Rahimi.
Here's Benayata. Rahimi, space to work in. Finds only the head of Sadani. of a mental challenge as a physical one for these two teams. Calls for maximum concentration. Nobody wants to make an error that leads to elimination. But somebody has the opportunity to step forward and be a hero. Rahimi, Nahiri in support. Jabrani. Morocco are going to make a change in a moment. They're going to bring on Mohamed Bemama, who's a central midfield player. Here's Brahimi for Algeria. Bel Ali, not seen him for a while on the ball. Gets his way into that Morocco penalty area, like a slalom skier there. Found himself off piste in the end. Morocco with an injury, their mama player I was talking about is uh, stripped and ready on the halfway line and the touch line to make his entrance. So the change is happening. El Kati will be replaced by Bemama. It's very much a like for like change, almost identical players and their uh, style and where they operate. It's captain in the last game, Bemama. Sadani. Possibilities here for Morocco. Rahimi tracked all the way, but it will be a corner. Two guy doing well. Certainly pushing himself into contention for more senior international caps. Been impressed with 21 year old two guy. It's for Esperance in Tunisia. Here comes the Morocco corner, and again uncertain on Boli. Just not confident the goalkeeper really has to take more of a commanding role. It's making his defenders nervous. Chibi often shapes for the long throw and then drops it in short, but this one's got distance on it. It's almost like a defensive header. Got that all wrong. Albuquerque.
snap shot from distance. Oh, what a goal! Absolutely magnificent. Mohamed Belali. Bow down at his feet. That was genius. Suniti perplexed. Look how early he makes his mind up here, off his chest, and then look, I'm going to beat you from here. All of 40 metres. Sensational goal. Worthy of winning any match. An Algeria lead again. No wonder he wears a broad smile. That was truly something special. Takes the adulation. Talked about the opportunity for someone to make themselves a hero. Well, he wears that crown right now. Morocco must find reserves of energy once more. Took them barely two minutes to equalise in the second half of normal time after Brahimi's penalty. But the Algeria fans in buoyant mood on that far side. We've seen some wonderful goals in this Arab Cup tournament, and that's right up there with the best. Free kick for the foul on Gibrani. time this is going to be a strike for goal and this is 30 meters out now here he can he counter with something special of his own oh and it's a good save from Mbappé might have been creeping in Stretch right hand must have seen it late. Ray Samboli been chalky with a corner. This is turning into a dramatic quarter final. Still some work to do at the back for Algeria. Goalkeeper looking to come, and this time he just about holds on. What's all the fuss about? <laughs> Trying to look calm there and bully, I'm sure he wasn't. Savali so just taking a stray hand. Sure, there was anything malicious in that. Having a look at it though, just to check. Not an official VAR check, which should add. Well, if it is the goal. That separates the two in this quarter-final. 
It's one that will live in the memory for a good while to come. Mohamed Belali have reached half time in extra time. And that sensational 40 metre strike from Mohamed Belali has Algeria in front with 15 minutes remaining. to rehydrate, gather themselves, Morocco, for a big final push to see if they can square it up, maybe take it to penalties. And what a surprise for Anas Zaniti to be beaten from the range he was, but look, high off the chest from Belali, and then instantly he sees the picture. Goalkeeper doesn't get set, doesn't have time to backpedal, it's superbly struck. Quite brilliant goal. Joy unconfined for Algeria and their goal scorer, Br Bel Ali. Change for Morocco at the start of the second half of extra time. On comes Amen Al Hassouni to replace Hafidi. One of the local players based in Morocco with the wide ad Casablanca club. Hassouni, El Hassouni, let's see what he's got to offer in the next. 15 minutes. But as it stands, Algeria are going to be Qatar's opponents in the semi final here at the Al Tamama Stadium this coming Wednesday. The other semi final already in place. Tunisia will play Egypt. Willing as always. Out for the goal kick. The referee is stamping his authority here, Wilton Sampaio, and he said, Look, I'm right on you if you're going to waste time. You can understand why Rice and Bolly is trying to do that, but the referee is saying, I'm having none of it. loud and clear. El Hassouni. Sadani. Don't think Algeria's game plan will be to sit on their lead. That might be inviting trouble against this Impressive Morocco attack. The attack with pace, the attack from all angles, the carrier threat. And it may just be Algeria on the counter attack. Rahimi goes down, free kick. Good position here now for Morocco. are housed, they've got a bird's eye view of this set piece. Benchaki over the free kick. Seven red shirts inside the Algeria penalty area. Remember they scored 
from a set piece to equalise Brahimi's penalty in the second half of normal time. Vincaki. It's harmlessly behind for the goal kick. Not the best delivery from Ashraf Benchaki. All the noise coming from the Algerian fans. <laughs> Foul by Brahimi. Permitted five substitutes. Algeria have only used two. I think Magic Bukera is keeping some substitutions up his sleeve for when we get very deep into the end of towards the end of extra time. So he could just run the clock down a little bit with a change or two. Will Sudani finding Bernoulli. Chibi. Bernoulli again. Another free kick. Poor challenge. Ben Debka, the offender. And this is certainly within striking range of that Algeria goal. Goalkeeper Mboli has to be watchful here. Whether well, uh, it's going to be a bit of disguise from Chibi to go for goal or maybe just help this into the penalty area. He's got choice. Looks as though he's going to just drift this into the box. Looking for Nahiri or Sadani or Ben Chaki. Morocco win the header. the keeper Morocco 2 Algeria 2 captain setting the example not a bad return is it for goals from a center back minutes plus time to be added on that's all we are away from potential penalties absorbing at the Altamama Stadium Algeria fans quietened by that 
Equaliser from Benoon. GB managed to deliver the free kick. Driving to that Algeria penalty area, still with Chibi. Got overexcited in the end. Thinks there was a deflection on that, but there will be no corner for Morocco. Rahimi just stretching inside his own half, not looking fully mobile at the moment. Yassine Brahimi, in fact, he's going to be replaced. Just run out of fuel. And the man coming on is Mekdi Tarat. Plays in uh, Qatar with the Al Garafa club, Tarat. A defender than a midfield player, so maybe some thoughts there from Bouguera that he might be happy to take this to penalties. Probably going to sit just in front of the back four, Tara. Here's Sadani heading towards the final five minutes. Almost half past midnight in Doha. Don't make me breakfast, mother. I won't be up. Momentum with Morocco. And a free kick to Algeria. noise from the Moroccan fans. Been a contest off the pitch as well as on it. Both sets of supporters trying to outsing one another. 50-50. Wonderful supporters for both these nations. Sadani. Is there going to be one last goal-scoring opportunity for either side in the remaining four minutes of extra time? Penalties is a horrible way to lose. Free kick won by El Hasuni. Not too many bodies going forward for this. A little bit of caution from Morocco. Benoon, has he got enough on that? Just about. Gibrani, it's a tired pass. And the 
Mark Greb Derby is poised to go all the way to penalty kicks. We're less than two minutes away from that now. misses the next match he will be out of the semi-final Mohamed Chibi if Morocco prevail he knows it just dawned on him there one of Morocco's best players at this tournament I would uh, say Chibi so they'll be without him but will they be there to play Qatar Algeria only now to say about that, and they've got a corner. We're in the last 60 seconds of extra time. Well, there's been a number of late goals at this FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. There's been some sensational goals. We've seen one of the very best from the man who's about to take the corner. At one stage, it was going to be the winning goal for Algeria from Mohamed Belali, a 40-yard volley had Algeria 2-1 up, but Benoun, the Moroccan captain with the equaliser, but can Algeria pinch it right at the end here? And Morocco, and the referees whistle in their favour. That might be the last opportunity for either side to make the breakthrough. It looks as though it's going to be penalties to decide the last of the quarterfinals. So it does indeed go all the way to spot kicks. Two teams who have given their absolute all in this game. It was nil-nil at half-time in normal time. Brahimi's penalty equalised barely two minutes later by Nahiri. And a goal apiece in extra time. Belali's magnificent volley. Benoun cancelling it out. 2-2 at the end of extra time. We await penalties. teams will have practiced penalties the coaches I suspect will know the players that they wish to take the penalty kicks fitness permitting Brahimi would certainly be one of those or would have been for Algeria had he not been substituted late on in extra time He'd given his all, he looked as though he was nursing an injury, Brahimi, when he came off. Of course, he scored a penalty in the second half of normal time. Twice Algeria led, twice Morocco fought back very well. I've said it's not a nice way to exit a major tournament the heartbreak will befall one of these two nations one set of fans are going to be back here on Wednesday for the semi-final against Qatar who will it be Morocco or Algeria opinion a draw was a fair result both sides had periods in the match where they had dominance and 
look back at that chance for number 17, Drawi. He was denied at point blank range by Zaniti. Two very important saves in the early minutes of the second half of normal time from Anas Zaniti. Roy Simboli, the captain, having to do the pep talk whilst trying to settle himself mentally for the job in hand. will be jangling for those players who will shortly be stepping up to take the penalties. <laughs> Going to be the third toss-up of the night for Benoon and Mboli. Put aside the order of the kicks to be taken. I think teams like to win the toss and go first, have that advantage. Pressure's always on the team that take the penalty second. That's if the side taking them first are successful with the first kick. Not always the case, of course. Be surprised if Benoun is amongst the penalty takers for Morocco. Three goals in the tournament, twice he scored at the group stage. And of course, got that crucial equaliser with that excellent header that got the best of the man facing up to him now, Raiz Mboli. Looks to me as if Mboli has won the toss there, which would suggest to me that the penalties are going to be taken at the Algeria end of the Altimama. Big roar went up from the Algeria fans when they learnt that. Something of an advantage, perhaps. We'll see. And it will be Algeria with the first penalty to be taken by their number 10, who scored that outrageous 40 metre volley that had Algeria 2 1 ahead. Certainly worthy of winning any game, but not to be for Balali. No, looking to be successful from the penalty spot. Nice exchange between the two goalkeepers. Wilton Sampaio making it clear to Anas Zaniti that you must keep at least one foot on the goal line. Here we go then. Penalties to decide our last semi-finalists at the FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021. Bill Ali. <laughs> Certainly didn't expect him to miss. Pretty much right down the middle. Stepping forward now, Sofian Rahimi for Morocco. Little kiss of the ball from Rahimi. No mistake.
Tuesday. 1-1 in the shootout. Next up for Algeria, Sofian Bendebka of the Al Fatah Club in Saudi Arabia. Looking to restore Algeria's advantage. No problem. Very calm. Gave the goalkeeper the eyes there. Two on Algeria. Stepping forward now for Morocco is Ashraf Benchaki. Fact it's uh, Benoun, beg your pardon, with the next penalty. Well, that was emphatic from the captain. What a leader he is. Even if Umbuli had guessed the right way, he was never saving that. 2 2 in the shootout. with the perceived advantage of going first in the shootout. Abdel Kadar Bedrani. Oh, just about. Fine margins there. Zaniti guessing the right way, pushes it onto the inside of the post and it rolls in. 3-2 Algeria in the penalty shootout. Next up for Morocco, Yaya Jabrani. One of the local base players in Morocco. Jabrani stares at the ball, doesn't look at the goalkeeper. And he too scores. Six consecutive successful penalties. If he'd gone the other way there, he might well have stopped that and bully with his legs. Next up for Algeria, Hossein Benayada. Getting to the business end now of the penalty shootout. Any missed spot kick could be very costly. 3 3. Benayada. Conclusive. Pressure back on Morocco. Almost reach out and grab the tension here. Next up for Morocco, Karim El Bakawi. Came on late in the match. Will Umboli guess the right way this time? Yes, he will! <laughs> El Bakawi denied!
the captain. And he certainly kept one foot behind the line. It's a legitimate save. And now one successful penalty away from a semi-final place for Algeria. And it's one of their least experienced players who's stepping forward to take it. He's had an excellent tournament, 21-year-old centre-back, Mohamed Tugay. Going to place himself in the history books of Algerian international football if he is successful. Tugay against Zaniti. penalties out of five for Algeria and they take the scalp of their arch North African rivals Morocco 5-3 on penalties in the Maghreb derby Algeria through to play the host Qatar in the semi-final here at Altimama on Wednesday What a finale. Ray Sambouli. What a nervous game, I thought, particularly when the crosses were coming into that Algeria penalty area. But ultimately, the captain delivered with that save to deny Karim El Bakawi. Morocco, who'd been so good at the group stage. Only they and the host Qatar had 100% records. Nine goals scored, none conceded to get to this quarter-final for Morocco. Twice they came from behind in the second half of normal time and in extra time. But it was two guys' penalty that decided it, and Zaniti very nearly saved it. Excluding penalty shootouts, Morocco have now not lost a senior international game for 32 matches. Those stats don't tend to include penalty shootouts. The last time they lost a competitive game without the need for penalties was in the 2018 World Cup. A single Cristiano Ronaldo goal for Portugal. But it's Algeria who progress. And they will be back here on Wednesday to face the host nation, Qatar. Not far short of one o'clock in the morning here in Doha as the celebrations continue for Algeria. Oh, 
كناش مزيانين الصراحه ما كناش كنستحقوا اننا نتاهلوا ولكن هذه هذه يلا بدايه ديال المنتخب اللي هو جاي قدام كل كي المستوى الكبير اللي دارنا به كنظن بان اليوم دفعنا الطريبه ديال ديال عدم التركيز ديالنا والدخول ديالنا مزيان منذ بدايه المقابله شفنا في الاخير كنا نستطيعوا نربحوا كيف ما كنا نستطيعوا نخسروا ضربات ترجع ضربات حق الحمد لله اننا اليوم كسبنا منتخب اللي هو كبير لاعبين بمستوى عالي غادي نزيدوا نستغلوا ان شاء الله باش نكونوا واحد من بين اللاعبين ديال كابتن حسين هارد لك هل تعتقد انه ضغط المباراه اثر على عدد من اللاعبين خصوصا الاسلحه اللي اعتمدت عليهم في المباراتين الاوليين خصوصا صحيح هو انه اليوم لم نقدم المستوى المطلوب باعتبار يمكن التهيئ النفسي لم يكن يمكن في المستوى وبالتالي اللاعبين يمكن تحملوا يمكن ضغط المقابله اكثر مع انهم لازم يفكروا فقط يعني في الملعب والامور والواجبات التقنية والتكتيكية مع الأسف لم نكن في المستوى رغم لم نكن في المستوى التقني والتكتيكي أننا يعني مشينا بالمباراة للتعادل والضربة الترجيحية ضربة الحظ هي اللي أعطت المنتخب الجزائري أنه يتأهل هنيئا للمنتخب الجزائري وإن شاء الله أننا نشتغل على أن نصلحوا يعني ما يمكن يعني إصلاحه في المناسبة القادمة قبل المباراة هل كنتم تفكرون في انهائها منذ البدايه ام وضعتم في الحسبان الوصول الى اشواط اضافيه يعني يمكن السيناريو اللي ما كنتش كنتصوروا هو الذي وقع يعني خاصه في الشوط الاول يعني انه اللاعبين ديالنا يضيعوا تمريرات بسيطه انهم ما يتمركزوش بالشكل المطلوب يعني ما كانش فريقنا لم يكن عادي لم يلعب يعني ب 50% من الامكانيات اللي لعبنا بها المباراه الاولى والثانيه والثالثه مع الاسف انه كان هناك لم يكن تركيز لم يكن تركيز يعني على 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 المباراه يعني مع الاسف امور لا تفهم يجب ان نشتغل اكثر على ما هو ديني وان شاء الله يتحسن المستوى ان شاء الله في المستقبل توفيق ان شاء الله نشكر لاعبين طاقة فنية وطبية ونشكر الجمهور والشعب وأدينا مباراة مليحة أمام فريق المنتخب المغربي يعرف يلعب كرة مليح الحمد أه أه لله يا ربي ونادوا هذا الفوز كل الشعب تاعنا هدف جميل جدا ليوسف بليلي سجلت مثله في الدوري القطري الحمد أه لله وين ربي وفقني سجلت هذا الهدف ناديه بزاف الشعب تاعنا ولا فامي تاعي بزاف بزاف الان النصف النهائي مباراه ايضا اخرى قويه امام منتخب صاحب الارض والجمهور بو الحمد لله دروك نفرحوا وان شاء الله مت... ديمي فينا كوت نادي كتر منتخب قطر ان شاء الله غادي نحطوا كل شيء اللي علينا باش ناخذوا هذا الكاس الجزائر ان شاء الله شكرا يوسف For sure, you are very, very happy today. They were warriors on the field. Yeah, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Very big, big congratulation for the players. The player who don't play, who play, they was a warrior. They have a very good mentality. They fight. So this victory is for is from them. So we need to give all the credit for them, and also for our fans in Algeria. So I think they, they will be happy. We, it was a very good game today. We see two beautiful teams. You know, every team have his moment. So they were strong in the in the in the free kick. But uh, you know, in the game, we do our best. We know that we don't have a big squad. Uh, they have a big squad. So when they make the change, they make the difference about the fitness. But 
I said that this game it would be mentally, fitness or no fitness, so they fight. And uh, very happy for, for, for Algeria, for the fans and for my player. Now the semi-final, another big game. You will play against Qatar. What can you say about this game? Yes, uh, a very big game. This is Qatar. I know very well this, uh, this team. I played there a long time. They're doing very well. So, inshallah, it will be a very good, uh, very good game, very good party between two country brothers. And uh, inshallah, the, the best win. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Good luck. So, this is how the final quarter final at this FIFA Arab Cup Qatar 2021 shaped up. Very little to split the teams in terms of possession. Attempts on goal couldn't split them at all in those on target. Four yellow cards for Morocco. Algeria in a Maghreb derby, not a single card of any colour throughout normal time, extra time. Great discipline from them. And we went all the way. So the Maghreb derby between Morocco and Algeria at the Al Timama Stadium promised a great deal. And it certainly delivered in the end, although defences were on top for much of the first half. And it took until the second half for our opening goal. The Brazilian referee, Wilton Sampaio, didn't give a penalty initially, but having gone to his review area, changed his mind, and it was a penalty for Algeria. Chibi's foul on Mohamed Belali, and Yassine Brahimi found the net, and Algeria led. 62 minutes on the clock. But Zaniti getting a strong hand to it, but not strong enough. But barely two minutes later, Morocco will level. Mohamed Nahiri with a perfect response for the team that were defending the Arab Cup they won back in 2012. Neither side could find a goal in the rest of the second half of normal time. So we went to 30 minutes extra time. And we saw one of the goals of the tournament. And there have been some incredible goals in this tournament, but that is right up there with the very best. 40-yard volley from Mohamed Belali, catching out Anna Zaniti in the Moroccan goal. But then, Bada Benoun, but he's still the competition, a beautifully timed header to beat Rai Samboli, and we were level again at 2-2. Neither side could find another, so we went to penalties to decide who would go through as the last semi-finalist. That was the vital save from Rai Samboli, and then two guys stepped up, and Algeria won the penalty shootout 5-3 to beat their great North African rivals on a dramatic night at the Al Timama Stadium in Doha. Algeria through to the semi-finals. Well, it's been quite a dramatic evening here at the Al Timama, and we now know our four semi-finalists. Tunisia will play Egypt this coming Wednesday. Back here at the Al Timama, also on Wednesday, the hosts, Qatar, will play Algeria for the right to make the final at the Al Bayt Stadium in Al Khor City on December the 18th. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage. Hope you can join us for those two semi finals on Wednesday. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>